one 877 Chris Matthews here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. Host of Hardball. You'll see him at 5 and 7 Eastern, Monday through Friday. All right. Uh, Chris, y- you worked on Capitol Hill with Speaker Tip O'Neill. He did deals with Reagan. How could they do them then and not do them now? What, well, what, dep- what's, what's different? I think it's important to remember what the deal was. It wasn't just a 50-50 deal. What happened was Reagan was trying to cut Social Security. He was going all around the edges of it, cutting the COLAs, raising the retirement age for early retirement. Every trick in the book wasn't working. O'Neill stood up to him, beat him every time. Now, that's not hard. Everybody wants Social Security, so he won the fight. Then there was the big election of 1982. Tip picked up 26 seats. Reagan was back on his heels. And so apparently, I heard this story from Tommy O'Neill, he, his son. Reagan says, let's go for a walk on the south lawn of the White House. And Reagan basically conceded the deal. He said, okay, we're going to do it your way, taxes. So instead of cutting benefits, they raised the exposure of taxes, you know, the income levels that could be uh, taxed for payroll taxes. So basically, they fixed the system for like 35 years based upon raising the revenue going into it, not cutting the benefits. Now, the reason they were able to cut it that way is two guys had a deal. One guy knew he was losing. Reagan knew this was a losing issue for the Republicans. If he wanted to get reelected in 84, which he did, gangbusters, he had to give on the weak points. He had to give on Social Security. Tip knew that he had to get this issue resolved. He had won all the points he wanted on it. He had gotten what he wanted out of it. He had won the election, but he wanted to make the thing work. So he said, okay, you cut it, but you cut it my way. Now, the trouble with this deal today is there isn't anybody willing to say Let me be honest, though. I think Obama is trying to cut it. Put him in a position of Reagan, only he's center left against the other crowd. He comes back. He's like got his butt kicked last election. So he goes up to these these conservative guys and right wing guys come to him and say, "We want to cut Medicare. We want to do cut spending and all this." But and he says, "Okay, how about a three to one deal, two to one deal, some deal?" No, they say. Now that's what's different. You see what I mean? Even the even the losing side has to get some piece of the action, some revenues. I mean, you can't ask a guy like him just to eat it. He's got it. I mean, what the Republicans and the Tea Partiers are now saying is Obama's got to cut a deal where he gives it all to them because they won an election. Well, nobody's going to make a deal like that. He's got to get some balance. And if he's going to trim the Democrats' advantage on Medicare, which you'd have to do, we've heard him in the next, because now they got the fortune cookie issue. They can't lose on it. If he wants Pelosi to give on that, he's got to get something from the other side. They won't give him anything, not a penny. So, and I think that's the difference between Reagan and Tip. Reagan knew. He had to give Tip the deal, and Tip knew he had to give Reagan something, something about later retirement. And we don't have that in the mix I don't right think now. they know how to just make a reasonable deal. I mean, I mean, somebody wins, somebody loses, then you deal. But this time, they say, we won, so the game's over. We take it all. What a demand that is. And I think that's where we're running into a real problem with default, and the system's not working. And I think it's as simple as that. So... The president has now said, this could cost me my presidency. Uh, He's going totally against his base, putting the big three, and totally against the 77 members in the House that have signed on saying, don't touch the big three. I mean, this guy is willing to go totally against the Democratic principles to try to get some more revenue to fix the finances. Well, he's trying to deal with the crisis. And and it's not a long-term thing. It's a short-term thing this time around. And I, I, don't, I don't know what. I, I look at these people, I'm beginning to decide. It's not a question of falling in love with any of these guys. It's a question of figuring who's doing the right thing today. And I look at McConnell, for all the wrong reasons, is probably doing the right thing, which is say, let's sign this damn debt thing, let's move on. Because what he wants to do is beat Obama next time. He wants him to take responsibility he, for He's it. willing to fight another day. He wants to blame it on him, let him take the hit. And in a way, maybe Obama's willing to take that deal, the president. I know the president so- doesn't want a, a crisis. Here's what I'd like to believe. I'd like to believe all these guys looked at it this way. The country first, the party second, me personally third. But they don't look at it that way. No. They always go with me first, maybe then the party, and then maybe the country. And then me again. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and I don't think that's the way people should be electing people. But, you know, I think their number one fear, Ed, I'm sorry, the, the, no. the filibuster, but the biggest fear they have is not the crash of this country to the floor. Their biggest fear is going back to a Tea Party meeting and have some red hot raise his hand and say, you're a traitor. I heard you had lunch with some Democrat. I heard you voted for a debt ceiling increase. I don't care if you got $5 trillion. Where does that come from? Where does that come from? They're afraid of facing down that one guy, the one guy or one woman. And what they ought to say, I'm a professional. I've been elected. My job is to go back and fight with that guy and say, you know what? I learned something the last two years. I've been here learning. The best deal for the country is what I just did. 
And that's what I just decided. The best deal for progressives or conservatives, whatever you are, is what I just did. But they're afraid of that guy. They're afraid of that guy. See, and, the hell with and, and, and this is what's amazing to me. Uh, I was saying this on the tube last night. You have a Democratic president who's willing to put the big three on the table. That's been the big enchilada for the right wing for years to chip away at these entitlements, and they still won't go after it and give just a little bit of revenue to the Treasury. Well, that's why they're fools. Why? Because they're fools. Because this is the chance. This is their opportunity. And I think Boehner I mean, knows I mean, that. I, mean, I, think, oh, I, think, I, I think McCain knows that. I think McConnell knows that. Uh, the guys have been around 20, 30 years know what a good deal looks like. By the way, uh, maybe they don't want a deal. Well, Brock, maybe, thought maybe yeah, when they want to uh, well, do is bring just, the house down, and then and then and then they want to just blame it they on want Obama. Chaos. Yeah. And by the way, I had this guy on last night, Steve King. Yeah. I mean, I like, I appreciate the first of all, if you're listening right now, Congressman, I'm glad you come on my show and please come <laughs> back. I like to argue with you, but you're wrong. Yeah. Because basically, uh, they're saying this isn't going to happen. But I like to say to him is, okay, will you retire from public life if we have a default? You say it won't happen, but if it does, yeah. will you quit? Yeah. Will you walk away and say, I've taken responsibility for yeah. that? No, they'll blame Obama. I, you know I, what they'll do. I mean, President Obama has been able to do something that Bush could never do, to get the big three on the table <laughs> as a negotiating chip. <laughs> I don't think he didn't want to. Huh? I don't think he wanted to. Well, uh, he wanted to privatize I, I watched it. how he, I, I, I'm, talk, I'm talking about our president, President Obama yeah. today. I think when he was a senator on his own, he was quite the progressive. Yeah. He was on his own. He just yeah. has to be a little bigger right All now right. and make bigger deals. Final minute. What do you got coming up tonight? We're going to talk about this. I just wrote my Jeremiah, just like you do. You yeah. start the show and let them know where you stand. And I, and I think this is almost moving into the uh, into the 11th hour this week. And yeah. I don't think it's the 2nd of August. It's next Friday. The 22nd of July. they got to get July. this damn thing done. Yeah. And, and, and you know who's serious right now. That's what you're finding out. It's yeah. not about ideology this week. This week is about who's going to be the grown-up. Charles Schultz says you can tell the difference between a grown-up and a kid. The grown-up's going to ride in the front seat of the car and steer the car and pay for the gas and own the car. The kid sits in the back seat and bitches. And that's it. That is what these Tea Party people are about. They sit in the back seat complaining. Chris Matthews. Not like host, I said. A host of Hardball, <laughs> never, of MS, MSNBC. Great to have you with us, Chris. You. I appreciate your great time. show. Thank you. So do you. And it's great to, uh, to hear you with us here on the program today. Your calls, comments, so much more coming up here where America comes to talk. The Ed Schultz Show. Stay with us.